Hi, I'm Lynette Reese, Technical Content Team Lead at Mauser Electronics. I have here a new, incredibly powerful little x86 board from Intel at an incredible price called the Intel Quark Microcontroller Developer Kit D2000. It's for developing, testing, and optimizing programs on the ultra-low power Quark D2000 x86 compatible embedded processor. The Quark D2000 is 32 bits and runs at 32 megahertz with an integrated two-channel DMA. There are two general use timers, a watchdog, two PWMs, and a real-time clock. The board is physically compatible with the existing ecosystem of the 3.3 volt Arduino Uno shields, so developers can leverage ready-made peripherals, but code may need to be ported or otherwise developed. The ecosystem for Quark D2000 includes a free software development tool called Intel System Studio for microcontrollers with an Eclipse-based IDE, compiler, and debugger for both Linux and Windows host platforms. The kit includes the board, a USB cable, and a small regulation notice. The board itself is 8.5 by 6.3 centimeters and about 1.8 centimeters tall, including standoffs. With respect to length, 8.5 centimeters includes a USB port, which is for programming and JTAG debugging. Considering accessories, if you want to see messages on a screen, you may want to buy a USB to serial conversion cable, such as an FTDI cable. It's for serial or screen output, such as running a Hello World program. The D2000 kit is rich with I.O. and features. Memory includes SRAM, instruction flash, uh, OTP flash and additional OTP flash with read protection. Additional IoT security is software and hardware based with a JTAG lock feature, secure update, isolated SRAM regions, and on die non volatile memory read write access control. Integrated power management and 25 bi directional IO that can be configured all as GPIO or other functions like I2C, UART, and SPI. 19 pins are selectable as analog input or digital, plus six digital only pins. It can run up to 19 analog comparators or 19 channels into an SAR type A to D converter with selectable 6 to 12 bit resolution. The output has programmable drive strength with integrated pull-ups, so all DOs can be directly connected to LEDs, relays, H-bridges, or switches. Is the D2000 kit open source hardware? Mm, almost. Design files are clearly available, but have copyright marks. However, users will see copious documentation, a responsive Intel forum, and the Intel System Studio for Microcontrollers, or ISSM, that I mentioned earlier. ISSM leverages free tools and uses the GCC compiler for C or C++ only at this point. There's also a real-time operating system called Zephyr for the D2000, an RTOS with a tiny footprint that is descended from Wind River's Rocket RTOS. So Zephyr is now the upstream for Rocket and more people are adding to it. You can find Zephyr as an open source project via the Linux Foundation or at the Zephyr project. Let's take a test drive to flash a blinking LED program to the board so you can see it work without the FTDI cable. To get started, you'll need a PC running 64-bit Windows or Ubuntu Linux and the latest JRE. I'm running Windows in this demo. Connect your board to the host with the USB cable First, you'll need the ISSM package, which is online for download. You need to provide an email address, enter a provided serial number, and complete the download by clicking on a link in an email. The ISSM software should automatically download and install. When you start ISSM the first time, you'll be prompted to select a path for storing everything. This is called the workspace. The first time you use the board, you need to flash the ROM using the ISSM. Choose Intel ISSM from the drop-down menu, and then Update Target ROM. Then click the correct target and select USB on board as a connection. Choose the latest revision of the BSP and then Update. It will start to update the ROM image. Once it's flashed, you can create a new project. Click on the Intel ISSM menu again and New Project. 
enter a name for your project. I'm going to name my project Blink LED. Select a template. I'm going to use the Hello World template for now. Make sure the connection from host to the D2000 board is still set to USB on board and click Finish. The Project Explorer pane shows the project I just created, so I will select it. Then, select the hammer icon and a drop-down menu will appear to build and debug in one step. When the Build Progress pop-up window shows that it's done, I'm going to open main.c and paste my Blink LED program over that Hello World template, and then save main.c in your project using the disk icon at the top. Next, you can select the bug icon in the drop-down menu, click on Blink LED Flashing. This flashes the Blink LED program onto the board and executes it. The debug view will be displayed. This short program quickly flashes, executes, and stops at the first breakpoint. Advance beyond the breakpoint by right-clicking on the program name in the debug window and selecting Resume or just hit F8. The shortcut key. The statement target running is visible. At this point your LED should blink 10 times because that's what's in the program. Let's go back into the program to change the total number of blinks to a higher number. Here's main.c so let's find the identifier max LED blinks and change the number inside the parentheses from 10 to 500. Save it, find the bug icon again, and click on the program name. It's going to take you to the debug pane if you're not there already, and you can release the breakpoint by hitting F8. The LED will blink 500 times now. When you're done editing and debugging, be sure to click on the little red square in the Open OCD session pane to stop the JTAG debug session before closing the IDE. And that's it for this demonstration. Find the example code for Blink LED and more about the Quark D2000 dev kit at mauser.com. And thanks for watching.